So we're here with uh, Nick Wiswell, who's the creative audio director here at Turn 10. Uh, you're working on the uh, audio um, for Forza 5, which is really impressive. Uh, I was really blown away by like the kind of the level of detail that you're kind of you're able to to create and, and to use here. I mean, the um, it's not just like you captured exhaust pipes, you're able to kind of capture exhaust pipe sounds and then model how they sound in like every single circumstance on every single vehicle. I mean, that's like an insane level of detail there. Yeah, but it's what's needed. Uh, real cars in the real world make hugely different sounds based on what they're doing. Are you full throttle? Are you off the throttle? Are you partial throttle? And in a game like Forza, you're going to be driving in so many different ways. So it's really important that we capture all of those details and play them back authentically. I was like kind of tickled to discover that you've, you're kind of like mixing other sound uh, sources in there. So like you're talking about how like you've got human screams in the in the tire screams and like lion roars and stuff like that to kind of like give the uh, audio that bit much more of a kick. I mean, how does that, how, how's, how does that work? It's stuff that's been happening in cinema for a very long time and games are just starting to start using these techniques now and it's how can we use non-real world sounds to deliver that experience at a primal level. It's all sort of uh, psychoacoustics where certain sounds will evoke certain emotions in people and mixing them in at a level where it's not necessarily audible but it, it still evokes that emotion in people because it's there subconsciously underneath the whole mix. And what's what's like the weirdest sound effect source that, that that you've got in there? Is there any, anything like particularly outlandish? We've got all sorts of uh, crazy electrical motors that we've been using that are actually part of the sort of sensor speed sounds. It's it's crazy how just having a high pitch zinging sound and then applying Doppler shift to it will make it feel like you've whooshed past something really quickly. So uh, for Forza 5, we haven't got a licensed soundtrack. There's no licensed songs in there at all. It's all this uh, like kind of procedurally generated um, uh, backing music. Can you talk a bit about how that works? So the goal this time was to create a very cinematic experience and a very cinematic score. So we wanted to go down that path. So we are actually recording live orchestra. We're recording live percussion. We're recording live choir, recording live guitar, live piano. All this stuff is being built together and with, think of it as a recording session where we've got all the different channels available to us and we're mixing it in real time as you progress through the game. So we've got all sorts of different layers and different elements that we can then adjust to back up what's actually happening in the game at that time to try and drive different emotional responses from the player. And you've talked about how you were working with Hollywood, like with uh, like Skywalker Sound, to kind of like pick up these kind of Hollywood tricks. Um, I mean, what, what were the kind of lessons you took from them? Spending a day at Skywalker Sound was a bit like a masterclass in, in sort of sound production. Um, the guys we work with down there have been doing movies for many years. And uh, they taught us loads of tricks they use in film that we weren't really thinking about in games like basing all your sound on scenes. Now, we don't necessarily have scenes like you would in a movie, but we can break a ga the game down into saying, we have a scene which is your skidding, a scene which is your crashing, a scene that is your driving. Breaking down the environment into scenes and saying, here we've got the start line, it's all grandstands and cheering crowds, but here we're out in the open, here we're in a canyon or a tunnel, here we're in a, a sort of city area. And we can bring all that together and create all these different scenes and then adjust the mix for each of those scenes in real time to try and focus the player's attention on the thing that's most important to them. Sometimes it's visual cues, but we're actually highlighting them sonically and just trying to deliver an experience to the player where it's just like, oh, we want you to notice this. Yeah. And it just draws your attention away for that split second, but without distracting you from playing the game. Yeah, I thought it was really impressive when the, the kind of way where you showed us where you know, you're, you're going, going through a crowd and you can hear the crowd and a helicopter comes down and, and that kind of comes in and, and like how you kind of blend all those diff different sounds in. And is that, is that that sort of thing, like how you bring those together? Yeah, the goal is that you don't actually notice that we've done it. Um, the idea is that we can draw your attention to things, but in order to do that, we've made other things go away. But those things aren't really important to you at that point. So uh, there's a principle that's been around in movies for many years that the human ear can only hear a small number of sounds at any one time. Now, in our game, what we consider to be a sound is a car, but a car is made up from lots and lots of different sounds all at once. But if you treat that as a single sound source, then it's like you could hear the car and the tires and the crowd and the helicopter and the ambient sounds. You would never be able to discern all those things happening at once. So we push the sounds you need to hear and back away the ones you don't. And because that sound wasn't important to what you were perceiving at that moment, nobody really notices that it's gone.